Breaking tonight with growing worries about the threat from this terror group ISIS, there are new questions about what happened to the thousands of foreign nationals who come here on student visas and then disappeared. Shannon Bream's been digging into this. She's live in our D.C. Bureau. Shannon? Well, Megan, the administration admits that in just the last year or so, nearly 60,000 student visa holders may have overstayed those visas, and that 6,000 of them have been referred to Homeland Security for further investigation. The number of foreign student visas granted over the last decade has more than doubled, but the warnings about gaping loopholes seem to have gone unheeded. One of the 9-11 Commission's top recommendations more than a decade ago was to clean up the student visa system, noting that many of the 9-11 terrorists attackers got to the U.S. legally through that channel. GOP Senator Jeff Sessions calls it inexcusable that no one has acted on the commission's urgent warning. One of their top concerns was that the exit visa system was not in place as they had recommended 10 years ago. The 9-11 Commission says it's an absolute factor of national security. I certainly agree. I don't think there's any doubt about it. ICE tells us, quote, any insinuation that ICE is not actively investigating visa overstay cases with potential links to national security and public safety is false. The agency has made numerous improvements to visa security since 9-11. Some 9,000 schools in the U.S. are part of the foreign student visa program, and get this, they're the ones responsible for keeping track of the students and reporting them to the federal government if they don't show up for class. But critics of that setup claim there are plenty of examples of schools profiting heavily off foreign students taking their money, but not reporting them if they don't actually attend the school. Megan. Shannon, thank you. Joining me now, New York Congressman Peter King, member of the Homeland Security Committee and chairman of the Subcommittee on Counterterrorism and Intelligence. Congressman, good to see you tonight. Thank you. Good to see you. And so not to worry, because the schools are supposed to keep track of these student visa holders. And it's not just, you know, Harvard and Yale that we have to trust, but there are apparently 86 beauty schools, 36 massage schools, nine schools that teach horseshoeing, not to mention those who study acupuncture and hair braiding and tennis and golf. I'm sure they're on it. <laughs> no, they're not. Uh, the horseshoeing folks right. are supposed to keep track of the student visa holders and report yeah. back to you if they go missing. Well, back to the department, to the Homeland Security Department. This has been an issue for a number of years. It's a serious issue. Uh, we've been introducing legislation, Congressman Gus Bilirakis from Florida, and going back to 2010, 2011, very simply would require colleges and universities every 30 days to report the status of these students. Fact is, the universities and the colleges, even some of the major ones, don't comply. They're very lax about it. What, what kind of screening is done before we give a student visa? To, because the, the, all these ISIS fighters, they're young. Not all of them, but many yeah. of them are young. They might be student yeah. visa age. The uh, State Department interviews them, and they're tested against the uh, terrorist watch list. That's the two main things that are done. All right. Do so, you trust that system? Uh, for the most part. But again, you can be a terrorist and not be on the terrorist watch list. So that's the... Uh, but again, uh, I, I think the universities are largely, not largely, but significantly at fault. They like the idea. A lot of these foreign students, especially from the Middle East, they pay top dollar. Their families have money. They, pull, they put big money into these universities. Mm -hmm. And they uh, too often look the other way or not, don't take it seriously enough. They get some kind of an infringement on academic freedom. So again, Gus Bilirakis' bill was very simple. Every 30 days, the university would have to give a status report or report to Homeland Security, anyone that they couldn't account for. Uh, and I, I want to I, I want to point out to the viewers that the the president has been telling the Democrats, at least, he came out over the weekend and told the Democrats, "Look, there's no immediate threat to the homeland." Okay, so student visas, not student visas. No. ISIS, not not ISIS. This group, ISIS, is no immediate threat to the homeland. Tonight, we get this message. He's just written an op-ed with Prime Minister David Cameron of of uh, the UK, and this is what he writes: First. Those who want to adopt an isolationist approach misunderstand the nature of security in the 21st century. So he's ripping on isolationism. Developments in other parts of the world, particularly in Iraq and in Syria, threaten our security at home. Congressman, my head is going to explode. Which is it? They are a threat to the homeland or they are not? They're a real threat. They're a real threat to security, uh, to our homeland security. ISIS is a threat. Al Core Al-Qaeda is a threat. And so is uh, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. ISIS right now has thousands of potential fighters that come to the U.S. The, every European who's this 
or two or three thousand Europeans fighting in Syria. They all can come into the U.S. under the European How passport. How worried are you 13 days out from the 9-11 mark? Well, I'm, I'm worried whether it's 9-11 or not. I am very concerned. I mean, this is a threat we've known for months and months and months. And for the president to say he needs time to put together a coalition, we have to plan strategy. He's known this for a year. Where has he been? Where has he been for a year? We've known all these facts. Nothing new is here. This has all been known to everybody in the intelligence community. And when you see somebody like Chuck Hagel or General Dempsey getting out front of their own commander-in-chief and saying what a threat this is, and he's acting as if it's not, and now he's somehow playing catch-up, saying we can't race in. We have to uh, get a coalition together. Mm -hmm. We have to formulate a strategy. He had 12 months to do this. And he's failed. This is a terrible failure of leadership by the president. I should, I should correct myself. Not 13 days. Today is September 3rd. Yeah. Uh, so we are closer to September 3rd and September 11th, right around the corner. Congressman, good to see you. Thank you. Uh, well, the Americans fighting for ISIS are not the only ones the White House is concerned about. We're now sending an additional 350 troops to help secure our embassy in Baghdad. Pete Hegseth at the head on that. Plus, as we just mentioned, the president is sending some very mixed signals about dealing with this threat from this group. Chris Dyerwalt is up next on what to make of today's very mixed message.